what's up my creamy little cherimoyas, aka custard apples, this is Rob from Gay Guy Plays, and today we are back with another installment of the Weekly Night Wave, the series where we take a look at this week's acts and find the most efficient or entertaining way to take them on. In addition to that, we do have a Warframe of the Week, but for a very non-typical reason, and I also wanted to have a quick chat about what's going on with Night Wave and what kind of Night Wave series we want to see next. Clearly, a lighter subject than we covered in our previous video. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So starting straight out of the gate, we do have a daily which is kill 150 enemies with corrosive damage and that's meltdown. Moving on we have poisoner, kill 150 enemies with toxin damage. This seems to be very Saren friendly as you can see. Then we have the hunt is on, find five syndicate medallions, conservationist, complete six different perfect animal captures in the orb valis, um, good friend, help clem with his weakness mission. We have Jailer, which is complete three capture missions. Polarized, oh thank god I don't have to do this. Polarized with Forma three times, not in the simulacrum. We have Tusk Thumping, kill a Tusk Thumper in the Plains of Eidolon. We have Ascendant, complete four Halls of Ascension missions on Lua, and then Sortie Expert, which is complete three Sorties. Now as you can see straight out of the gate, Sortie Expert is going to be the one that's going to take up the most of your time because it is going to need to be completed in three different days. However, everything else is pretty easy and there's a couple combinations that we can actually see straight out of the gate. So as you can tell right here, the hunt is on which is find five syndicate medallions. You can actually go ahead and capture that with Jailer. There you go, which is three capture missions. So you can just go ahead and do syndicate slash capture missions um, to be able to find all of the little medallions. In addition to that, you can actually kind of do a little bit of a cross with Jailer and where are you? Um, the one where you have to complete Halls of Ascensions on Lua because you can actually do the capture on Lua, capture your target, then run around and try to find the rooms. One of the big things that I always point out with Ascendant is if you don't know how to do the Halls of Ascension, and you just don't even want to think about it, like, just go into public mission, and usually people will end up doing them without you. They're just going to be independent. So if you want to, you know, do a little leeching, that is definitely the way. However, I do have a Halls of Ascension video. It's not mine. It's somebody else's. Then I'll actually go ahead and link down in the description box below that you guys can go ahead and learn. And I think that that's a really good kind of, like, task to keep yourself busy because you know we don't have any content. Well, not in until towards the end of the month anyway. So if you want to kill some time and learn a couple cool things, definitely go ahead and check out that video. Hopefully I can find it. Tusk Thumper is super duper easy. Um, just blow out the knees, kill the little holes, and then it'll die. And then you get some resources to boot on top of all of that. Like I was saying earlier too, when we talk about Meltdown and Poisoner, that's definitely an easy peasy Saren thing. Um, and then forever in a day, thank freaking God I never have to do it ever again, which is polarize, polarize with Forma three times. But I would suggest though, if you haven't done it already, check out the most recent, not the most recent video that I did on Zaws, but it's one where I went ahead and did all of my favorite Zaw builds. So check that out just in case you wanted to go ahead and find something that you needed to polarize because Zaws are always something that you can go ahead and construct um, and, you know, make something that might be a little bit useful to you. I'll leave that linked right up there as well as in the description box below. Now, this is definitely what I like to call cleanup week. I've had a couple of friends that didn't necessarily um, finish up certain steps because they couldn't hit certain ranks within Solaris to do uh, profit taker fights and some people had some issues with Eidolon fights. I'm very very curious, did you guys need some sort of tutorial on the Eidolon fights because I saw a lot of people making the comment that oh well I'm not going to get it done this week because of the Eidolon fights. Um, let me know what your issues with that are in the uh, comments below because if there's some way that I can help uh, because to be honest with you, I just will jump into a public mission with my Warframe of the week um, and be able to knock it out pretty easy peasy. So I'm just saying if that's something that you need, but let's go ahead and jump into something real quick because one of the things that I noticed is we still have two more acts for the Emissary and we're already kind of complete 
with, um, you know, all of the things that we could possibly get from it. So let me know what you guys think is coming down the pipe. The last thing that we've seen, of course, is the fact that now all of these people are throwing themselves into these spored areas in order to try to, like, I don't know, prove their worth to Arlo. Um, what the, I still am curious as to what the fuck that is about, and then of course we have all of them starting to appear in our missions and attack us. So, I don't quite know where the story is gonna go from there, whether Arlo cures them of their diseases and ends up killing all of the crazy people, including the old man. That's kind of where I'm leading to right now, because Arlo looks like a devil creature, but maybe they're gonna put a twist on it where the devil creature is actually gonna be the one that ends up saving us all from the corruption of the crazy man. And it's almost kind of like Arlo is the devil that's gonna punish him for his sins and for, you know, telling all of these people to like be his disciple. I don't know, let me know where you think that is gonna end up going because we still do have two more episodes and I don't know when it's coming, but apparently, they're still there. Um, in addition to that, let me know where you think they're gonna end up going next because of course we have Wolf of Saturn 6 and then we have the Emissary. So that is Grenier. Grenier slash Corpus because towards the end of that it kind of got a little Corpus and Sentienty. So that's almost like three in one. Um, and then of course we have the Infested. So where do you think they're gonna end up going next? Do you think they're gonna sink in heavily into the Corpus or maybe do you think they're gonna completely do a a different turn where they're gonna jump into something with the Arokin and maybe explore the past of the you know Warframe and operators because I did hear them having a little bit of a chat about the fact that they wanted to make the story a little bit more um, drawn into us at some point like they wanted to interact with us but not necessarily be like a new you know second dream or the war within so I don't know my maybe a little historical romp in the towers let me know what you guys think they should go next or where you think they're going to end up going next or what you would like to see from them next story-wise. Most likely we're going to end up with another intermission um, between then and then another story, but that's what I'm kind of curious to see. Now, let's talk about the Warframe of the week, which of course is Oberon. Now, uh, Oberon made it to this list for a very different reason than uh, normal, mainly because of the fact that Hold on, Let, let's just take a look at this right here. So if for some strange reason you are not following me on social media, you might not have seen this. And this of course is going to be the new Yokai skin by Hitsusan. Tell me, this is not a gorgeous freaking Oberon skin. This is the secret skin that he'd been working on um, without really telling anybody. He went ahead and ended up releasing it. But oh my god, it looks so juicy. I almost don't want to talk about it because there's like a slew of new skins that hit Tenogen. I was a little bit earlier with my previous video and now the deadline is even closer. So we're going to end up seeing more and more of these skins. But holy shit! I am so excited about this, so I wanted to, you know, give you guys a little bit of a reminder that Oberon exists, especially with the whole Eidolon fight, because I was like, y'all, yeah, like, Oberon makes this easy, like, where you at? Um, so as you can see, it is pretty freaking gorgeous. Um, we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive, but I did want to bring your attention to the fact that this... I mean, it, we don't know if it's getting approved or not, but this is somewhere in the pipe. Look, look at the horns on the back. Oh, look at the little triangle. You know, I like triangles. Hitsusan likes triangles. I'm just saying it's absolutely gorgeous. So if you guys have not checked this out, definitely head on over to the Steam Workshop. Take a look at all of that butamus that is coming your way. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and jump back into the game and take a look at my current build for him as well as the fashion frame that I have. Okay, so let me just say this. Is it me or do you feel like Oberon has some of the best fashion frame out there. I'm not sure if the rest of you guys feel this way, but he's got an amazing helmet, the Destrider, he's got the Blade of the Lotus skin, um, he's also got the Fey Arc Deluxe skin, the Wendigo skin, he's just got a great collection of 
pieces and to have the Hitsusan piece come in next, I'm just really, really freaking excited. So if you guys are into this, I'm going to go ahead and toss um, the color codes down in the description box below. In addition, I wanted to point out little subtle things that I do. You probably can't see it here, but I have the emissive and the energy kind of flipped and I've actually darkened up the emissive, the second part of the emissive here to kind of create this nice soft gradient. Again, color codes down in the description box below. Um, to kind of give it a little bit of a tint, but not necessarily blowing out the color. I absolutely love it. And I love it with the Destrider helmet. Uh, Ro Reiku. Oh my god, I, I blacked out for a second. Reiku did an amazing job on that one. And he's got another skin that I see in the market that is uh, potentially up for, what do you call this, for being put into the game. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this build real quick. Because to be honest with you, this is one of the Warframes that I heavily considered uh, going full on in with maybe like an Umbral Forma. Uh, but as you can see right here, I have been experimenting with an adaptation version of what we've seen before, just because I wanted to do a little bit of play. So as you can see right here, I am using Hunter's Adrenaline because listen, Oberon can generate health for you. So technically you're um, generating health and taking damage at the same time, which helps you generate energy. So being able to do all of that really keeps you alive in some crazy situations because your buffs just don't go down. And then using your abilities to kind of CC and keep that regeneration going, stacked on top of Arcane Grace is just all kinds of sexy. I'm super duper into it. Um, so if you guys have not checked this build out already, definitely go ahead and play around with that. Um, but previous to this, instead of adaptation, I actually had Vi not Vitality, Primed Vigor in that spot. So that's the original version. Adaptation is what I've been playing with. Um, decent for the star chart. I need to do a little bit more testing on it, but just know that's where you can kind of sub in and sub out. And because of the fact that he does get smacked around a little bit when using Hunter's Adrenaline, the Prime Flow is a nice way to kind of bank all of that. Now, if you're still having kind of like um, energy issues, you can always toss out the Arcane Graces and put in Double Energizes to keep the energy up um, but usually you won't have to do that when you are facing more difficult content and that's where I tend to bring Oberon like you know I leave the easy peasy stuff to some of the faster spammier frames or some of the frames like Ember where you just run through brainlessly so I like Oberon for some of the tougher stuff including um, going up against Eidolons and don't forget that he did get a buff to his augment the smite infusion I personally don't really use it but now you can hold it down and it'll give an AOE buff to your allies as well as you so that way you guys can do radiation damage to all of the joints on those Eidolons. So I don't use it but y'all if you want to use it you can go ahead and do that. So that is kind of like where I wanted to leave it but I did want to have a quick chat with you guys. There's some other kind of you know topics that I wanted to talk about in Warframe. Some things that were a little bit rougher. I don't necessarily know if I want to put two heavy topics back to back. Um, but let me know if there's anything specifically issues wise that you want me to um, address in video form. Like, let me know. Don't hold back. Toss it in the comments below and we'll have a little bit of a chat if it comes down to it. Uh, regardless, that about does it for me for now. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. And go get your operator suit if you haven't been able to get it already. It's time. Now you can look all infested. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.